Hello and good afternoon, TVI viewers. Welcome to Crossroads with Neetan Shan. As you know, Crossroads is a weekly talk show dedicated to discussing a variety of topics that are relevant to the social, economic, political, and cultural advancement of Tamil Canadians. As many of you are aware, a controversial policing practice called carding has been in the news a lot recently. Many community members believe that this practice is a violation of their human rights as well as a serious racial profiling issue. So on today's episode of Crossroads, we will discuss carding. Just talk a bit about what is it, how does it impact our communities, and also more importantly, what can be done about it. In the first segment of the show, we are joined by MPP Jagmeet Singh, who is, the, who is trying to get an Ontario government to take action on ending the carding practice. So welcome, uh, MPP Jagmeet Singh. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. All right. So let's get to the, get to the matter of carding, because sure. it's, it's been in the news lately a lot yes. more. Um, so why is it an important issue? And you have taken up uh, uh, a position, you've not only taken a position, but also advocating for action within, uh, within the Ontario government, right? So let's talk, talk a bit about the practice itself. Sure. Why is it a problematic practice? Sure. Well, first, I guess we have to define what the practice is. So what it is, is carding is one of those things that it's kind of difficult to define, but it's something that you, if you've been carded, you know exactly what it is. Carding is any time the police stop you, they question you, ask for identification, and then log that information in a database. Um, and they, all, they do all of this for absolutely no reason. And that's the key part, is when there's no grounds, what we say in law is reasonable grounds or articulable cause. Mm -hmm. But basically in layman, uh, you know, it's basically the, the idea that you have no grounds or no reason to stop somebody. So what happens is, and now that's the kind of the definition of it, but what it does is when you're stopped by police again and again in your community for absolutely no reason, you haven't committed an offense, you're not being investigated for a criminal investigation, you're not being given a ticket, uh, and you're just stopped by police, asked identification, asked questions about where you're going, where you're coming from, what it does is it sends a very damaging message. It sends a message that you don't belong. And when this is compiled with the fact that mostly carding happens to racialized or historically marginalized communities, what it does is it tells communities that already feel marginalized, already feel that they're you know, not welcome or maybe they don't belong, it, it highlights that message. It sends a very cloud, a, a loud and clear message that because of the way you look, not because of anything you're doing, you're not welcome in your own community. And that has a negative impact on your self-worth and your self-confidence. Mm -hmm. So before we talk a bit about the profiling part of it, sure. this has been going on. I, I remember from my high school time, I think uh, this practice, if it was called something else maybe uh, at that time, but it was still there. Yes. And this has been going on. Why, why is there a uh, focus now? Sure. Uh, what, what's bringing the highlight? Sure. First of all, you're absolutely right. This has uh, historically been something that's been going on. Uh, it's been referred to as street checks before, mm -hmm. and even before that, there's been other terms used to. I've, I've experienced it myself personally in Windsor, growing up as a, as a kid driving my father's nice vehicle. He mm -hmm. was a doctor, so I drove his car, and then police would stop me for routine checks. Mm -hmm. And carding happens whenever you're stopped, questioned, and there's no charges laid. Uh, the reason why it's gained so much attention nowadays, the Toronto Star did a very in-depth analysis about mm -hmm. what is going on. And they gave us some data. And one of the pieces of data which is very um, marked or very noticeable is the fact that they looked at a particular population. They looked at uh, African Canadians, mm -hmm. the black community. And they found that in a particular region that uh, in the GTA, they found there's 200,000 in terms of population. But when they looked at the data, but how many from that same demographic, from the African Canadian demographic, how many people were carded, though their population in that area was only 200,000, the number of times that exact same demographic was carded mm -hmm. was 400,000 times. Mm -hmm. So there's 400,000 entries for carding, even though their population is only 200,000, meaning mm -hmm. that at least every person was stopped more than once and maybe people were stopped multiple times beyond mm -hmm. twice maybe ten times mm -hmm. maybe you know more than that we've heard Desmond Cole uh, yeah. he shared his story about being stopped more than 50 times mm -hmm. and it added a human element to the story mm -hmm. so we have data from the Toronto Star when they analyzed carding showing that one uh, the community the communities are being over over carded certain mm -hmm. communities mm -hmm. they also found that if you're uh, a black youth that you'll be stopped, you'll have a likelihood of being stopped three to four times more often mm -hmm. than any other uh, race or any other background. Mm -hmm. They found that for brown skin folks, that they're stopped uh, about two times more often. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, there's some raw data that shows that not only is this practice going on, but there's also um, a racial profiling element as mm -hmm. well. So many of the communities, I mean, you, you represent an area in Brampton, yes. which has a high South Asian population, but also Brampton has a high uh, black Canadian population That's as right. well, right? And so it's very uh, very important issue, both for your writing, but also provincially, you're a lawyer as well, right? Absolutely. So talking about this issue, is it, 
Um, is it being understood as a human rights violation or is it seen as a racial profiling or it's a combination of both? I think it's absolutely a combination of both. I mean, we have charter rights that protect us from two key things. Uh, Section 8 of the charter protects each and every individual from unreasonable search and seizure. And Section 9 of the charter says that every individual should be free from arbitrary detention or arrest. Meaning that, you know, to put it very simply, that you shouldn't be detained or stopped without any reason. And you shouldn't, you shouldn't be searched, again, without any reason. And what happens when you're carded is you're being stopped without any reason. There's mm -hmm. no grounds. There's no evidence that links you to a particular offense or mm -hmm. investigation. And in addition, you're being asked questions. You're kind of being searched in a way. Mm -hmm. Information being taken out of you, and then it's being logged into a database. So it's a violation of our charter. But in addition to being a charter or a human rights violation, there's also the racial profiling element where mm -hmm. it's a specific, a specific community that's being targeted. Mm -hmm. So not only is it violating charter rights, but it's also violating the charter rights with respect to certain communities more than others. Mm -hmm. So it's a combination of the two. And, and you know, there were mentions that you know, the black community is not being overcarded just only in the black uh, heavy areas, but also in areas where they live in lower number, the amount of carding that uh, individuals from the black community face are, are, number, uh, are pretty high as well. Ethan, right? Absolutely, so that's, that's a very good point. They actually did uh, analysis of the entertainment district, yeah. which doesn't have a high percentage of residential communities yet. So it's a community that's considered, you know, people that are in the entertainment district of Toronto, mm -hmm. they're either, you know, from other parts of the community or they're working there mm -hmm. or they're there for, you know, mm -hmm. entertainment purposes. They found that in that particular area, that's mm -hmm. where they found that you're more likely, far more likely to be stopped mm -hmm. um, if you are, if your skin color happens to be black mm -hmm. or brown. Mm -hmm. And it's not based on the fact that there's more of that community living there, it's mm -hmm. strictly based on race. Uh, other communities where there's a higher percentage of a particular racialized community, if they're mm -hmm. stopped more often, there might be some link because there's more mm -hmm. of that okay. particular community in that area. But no, it's a, it's a fact uh, that it's just being targeted, mm -hmm. it's a targeted approach to particular mm -hmm. communities and that's why it's a big problem. So in this context, I mean, there's growing evidence to show this practice is uh, racist. Yes. And it's grounded in no principles of human rights and yes. so on. Um, you know, you're a Sikh uh, Canadian, I'm a Tamil Canadian, we have gone through racial profiling as communities absolutely, as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so why is there so much silence, especially in the provincial level? Because, uh, you know, municipally, a number of councillors have signed uh, a letter asking for the carding to be ended. Yes. And, but there's generally a silence at the other levels of government about this practice, which right. is, you know, heavily concerning because, you know, as you talk about multiculturalism and equal society and so on, this practice definitely doesn't seem to have a place in the society. Absolutely, you, have, you make a great point. What I noticed was that you know, municip municipalities were talking about the issue, but there wasn't any action being done. Mm -hmm. The chief of police had mentioned the issue, uh, Bill Blair talked about doing something about it, but then at the end of his term, mm -hmm. resigned or resiled from that position. And mm -hmm. then the recent, uh, the most uh, recent uh, chief of police, yeah. Mark Saunders, indicated that he would not be ending carding. Yeah. So I noticed that, uh, that you know, whether and there's been the mayor uh, saying that he would exactly. and then not, so, not necessarily ending up in action, right? Exactly. So I noticed there was a lot of, you know, um, uh, back and forth on this issue. Municip you know, municipalities weren't taking the leadership. The police boards weren't taking the leadership. And now we have some positive signs from the, the mayor of Toronto that mm. John Tory now seems to be saying that it's something that should be ended. I thought that the province is in a best position because this isn't just a Toronto issue, this is a province-wide issue. Mm -hmm. Any urban centre, a major urban centre where there are racialized communities, they do suffer from this experience. Mm -hmm. They do actually experience uh, some form of carding, whether mm -hmm. it's street checks, and it is something that damages the community. So uh, I called on the government for a provincial strategy mm -hmm. to ban carding because where the municipalities weren't taking action, the province is in a position to provide leadership. Mm -hmm. All of the prosecution in the province goes through the Ministry of the Attorney General. So mm -hmm. that is the, the end-all, be-all for prosecutions. Mm -hmm. And the Ministry of Community Safety and Correctional Services is the guiding principle behind policing in the province. So mm -hmm. with those two ministries providing the prosecution direction and providing direction on policing, they could provide a directive to say that this practice should be banned across Ontario. Mm -hmm. And that's something I call the government to do. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's been a number of talks about regulating or reforming this practice, right? Yes. If it's grounded in, in unfair practices, is there a possibility to reform or regulate or should it be banned altogether? And that's a really good point. And we've, uh, so after, you know, about three weeks after I made the announcement in, in Queen's Park asking for a provincial strategy, the government announced a provincial strategy, which was encouraging. But the problem is the government announced a provincial strategy to regulate the practice. And uh, far greater legal minds than myself agree that the, you know, the Law Union, the Canadian Civil Liberties Association, the African Canadian Legal Clinic, they all point to the fact that this is something that violates the Charter. You can't regulate something that violates the Charter. Mm -hmm. You can't regulate something that's unconstitutional. There's actually a court challenge 
with respect to uh, the idea of carding. It's being challenged by an Osgood Hall student, law student, mm -hmm. who's taking this matter to court. And we're very confident that the court's going to rule that this is unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. So how can the government regulate something that already violates the law? It mm -hmm. can't. And that's why we're going to put pressure on the government to say, listen, this is a practice that should be banned. You need to change the framework of your you know, direction that you're providing or the strategy that you're developing, the strategy can involve a regulation, has to involve banning. Mm -hmm. what's, uh, what's the response to people or, or certain number of uh, individuals who say this is providing valuable information that ensures community safety? Um, I haven't seen any evidence to show that, but that's usually the defense for this practice as, as a way of uh, prevention of violence and so on, right? Well, well absolutely, and we've spo I've spoken to police officers about this, and, and this is what it comes down to. Um, the law is very clear. Police have many, have many tools. They can stop people, they can investigate people. The police can even search someone on the street if they have reasonable grounds. Mm -hmm. And that's the issue. Mm -hmm. We want policing based on evidence. Mm -hmm. It can't just be arbitrary. It can't just be because a person looks a certain way. The policing has to be based on that there's a link between that individual and some suspicion that's based and founded in some sort of fact or evidence. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to happen. That's what the law has said it very clearly is acceptable. And the police can continue to do good work. They just have to stop people when there is some reason. And that mm -hmm. still allows the police to stop mm -hmm. someone. For example, say if there is a particular area where it's an in, in industrial area, mm. all the factories are shut down, there's no residential and there's no businesses there, mm. for example, restaurants. Mm. Mm. And it's uh, late at night and there is you know, a car with a bunch of people hanging mm. out in the car in front of one of those locations. Now, there is an argument to be made that there may be grounds because yeah. there is no businesses open. There is no you know, workplaces open there. There is no public transit stop there, let's say. There is no place to live or to, you know, for them to you know, go back to their homes. It's just an empty warehouse area. Mm -hmm. Then in that case, the police might have some grounds to stop that individual. So I've challenged the police to show me wherever they've made you know, different stops if they have had some grounds and made that stop mm -hmm. or if they've had absolutely no grounds. Where there's absolutely no grounds, uh, it's not something that should be allowed. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, re I remember as a candidate uh, knocking on doors during daylight and asked by police, what are you doing in this neighborhood? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, it's usually they don't see somebody of my age or color to be a candidate knocking yeah. on doors in a, in a neighborhood. And, right. and, you know, that again, the kind of, you know, I wasn't caught it. I was asked and few questions were asked and right. the information was uh, not recorded. But still, you know, those kind of, you know, uh, based on stereotypic roles of right. who could do what, right? Exactly. Uh, and so, so it's, it's uh, definitely something that needs to be paid more attention. In fact, you know, we're seeing uh, in North America, there are a number of cases that have gone to the extreme of, of uh, people having lost lives, right? Yes. So in, in, in Canada, if you can take a proactive step to do this early enough, That's we right. might be able to prevent a lot of uh, loss of lives as well. So my final question, because we are at the end of this segment, sure. uh, so just uh, um, you know, you have uh, you have actually committed to taking action. Yes. And you are in a position of uh, member of provincial parliament. How yes. would you use your position and through the channels of power in the legislature in Ontario to advance this course? Well, one of the things we're going to do is over the summer, instead of working on. Um on a strategy to regulate the practice, we're actually going to look at what type of strategy we can implement to ban the practice. So we're looking mm -hmm. at legislation, uh, we're looking at different directives, and I'm hoping to table something in the form of a private member's bill or a motion when the uh, parliament resumes back in, in the fall. And I'm looking to bring forward some clear piece of legislation or some clear motion that would direct the province to ban this practice. There mm -hmm. could be other avenues that when it comes to training and other avenues about discussing what are the police in terms of what are their roles and what are the appropriate ways to engage with the community. Mm -hmm. That's a separate discussion. But when it comes to carding and street checks, if there's no grounds, if there's no reasons to stop someone, they should not be stopped. If there's no grounds or no reason to ask them questions, they should not be questioned. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, MPP Jagmeet Singh, for taking your time off your busy schedule to be here and to talk about this important topic. And after we come back from a break, we will be talking to two community activists who are on the ground working on this uh, particular issue as well as working with impacted populations. So thanks, uh, MPP Singh, and we'll see you in another show soon. My pleasure, thank you. Please stay tuned. After a few commercial breaks, we'll, we will be back uh, to talk more.